All right, here we go. We're going to read the books, December 19th, 1990. My tiger, boy, hunter boy is not feeling very good. He's got a fever, don't you? But Mom went to the library, took back the library books, and so she picked up some new, and this one's called A Birthday Surprise. Hey, Christmas almost here, isn't it? Huh? Is Christmas almost here? This guy is a, what? Mm. A skunk, I think. Looks like a skunk, because he's black, and he's got this tail here. His name is Sammy, and he says, Sammy is all alone. I told Cheyenne we were reading this. She's out there with Mom in the studio, I guess. And he says, nobody likes me. <laughs> you say that sometimes, don't you? Hunter, you say that sometimes. Oh, mommy doesn't like me. You really doesn't like me. You get all upset. And he says, nobody likes me. And today is my birthday. Look, at, it's almost the same day as your birthday. It's in June, the first part of June. And this then, the doorbell rang. And ding, 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 ding. Did you see the bell right there by the door? And here's Sammy. He's looking at the calendar. He's realizing it's his birthday. And somebody is outside. Who's outside? Kitty. A kitty of some kind, isn't it? Oh, well, the kitty was bringing a big box. It was a delivery cat. And the delivery cat brought a great big red box. Now, look at this box. This box is bigger than Sammy. In fact, Sammy has to go outside and get a ladder to climb up. And he puts up the ladder and goes... And he's climbing up and he's unwrapping the box, a huge box. It's got a green ribbon on it. So he opens the box and inside is another box. Only this time, it's a white box with an orange ribbon. And Sammy's going, well, what's this? And so he opens that box. And now inside that is another box. This box is a green, a green box with a white ribbon. And Sammy is going, good heavens. And so he opens that box up, takes the lid off, and inside it is a, <laughs> that's right, another box, a red box with a yellow ribbon. And Sammy is going, come on, you guys. And he opens it up, takes off the ribbon, opens it up, and inside is a, well, now it's gotten down to the point where the box is pretty small, too, isn't it? It's quite a small little box, and it's a blue box yellow ribbon. So he opens it up and inside that is a yellow box. Now inside the yellow box is a hat. Yay! And the hat is red and white and blue. And Sammy has a lot of boxes, doesn't he? And so Sammy puts it on and he says, Happy birthday to me. Oh, but nobody likes me. And so Sammy goes up to his room, and he's wearing his birthday hat, and he lays down in bed, and he takes his little toy bear, his teddy bear, or his teddy lion, or whatever it is. And so he goes, and he's still crying, look at that. And tears are coming out of his eyes. And then, all of a sudden, he hears, the door is starting to open, and it's opening very slowly. And so he hides under the covers. Look at, there's his tail. He puts the covers up on top of him, he snuggles down under the covers, and then he hears, Happy Birthday, Sammy! Yay! And all his people are out there. Look at a hippopotamus, a bird, a pig, a dog, a bunny, a raccoon. They all have on party hats. They're all going, Yay, Sammy! Happy Birthday to you! Happy Birthday is very happy, says Sammy. He comes up from out from under the covers. He has on a hat. They say, let's have a party and celebrate your birthday. And everybody's happy. Is that me? Now, he was, he was, he said, well, nobody cares about me. Nobody likes me. But that wasn't true, was it? Me. They all liked him. Come on, Cheyenne. I've been wondering where you are. Yeah. Get up here. We're reading books. You missed the birthday surprise book, but we got more to read. Did you dress up as a little ballerina, sweet birdie? No. That's you didn't? No. Well, it looks like it's a ballerina. Only I think Cheyenne put it on inside out this time. And then I put it on this side. 
<laughs> Cheyenne, look, we're going to read these books. You see these books? What, do you want Daddy to help you turn it right side up? Huh? Okay, we have to stop reading for just a moment here, Hunter, while we get Cheyenne's ballet custom fixed, okay? <laughs> Come here, sweetie. <laughs> How many times have you changed clothes today? Ten? Fifteen? No, only once. Yes. Only once? Baloney. Cheyenne cannot function with only changing clothes once. <laughs> she likes to change clothes all day, don't you? Hmm? Okay, let's get it out. I thought you were going to put on your jammies. You told me your jammies. You have created a new costume. Nope. Nope? Well, looks like a new costume to Daddy. Know that? Nope. Okay, well, anyway, should we read this one next? Yeah. I mean, this one is called Mean Murgatroyd and the Ten Cats. I think that these are the ten cats. And there's a little girl, and this is probably Mean Murgatroyd. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's right, there's ten cats there. Okay. Mean Murgatroyd and the Ten Cats. Ooh, look at that cat. What's that cat doing? It's a meow. <laughs> That's a scared cat, isn't it? His, all of his hair went straight out, going, No, 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 no! It says, Arabella owned ten cats. Now, this little girl right here, her name is Arabella. She owned ten cats, and every day she led them out of her house to take a morning walk. See? Okay, open the door, and out you go. Down the stairs, and she takes them for a walk. How would you like to have to take ten cats for a walk every morning? I want to take a ninja. Well, what about ten cats? Can you see taking them out of our house and going for a walk with ten of them? Can you imagine that? We could go down to the beach, I guess, huh? They'd probably like that. And every day, the dog next door, whose name was... Mean Murgatroyd barked a special bark, and that meant that all the other dogs knew that the cats were out. All the dogs in town would come running, and they chased Arabella and her cats all the way back to the house. Look at that poor kitties are all scared to death. And all the dogs, because of him, he tells them when the cats come out, and they all come running to chase the cats. Oh, no. And so Arabella says to her mother, she says, Mama, I need a lion. Well, lions cost a lot of mother money, said her mother. Well, she said, well, I could open up a lemonade stand, and I could sell lemonade, and I'll make a lot of money so I can buy a lion and get those dogs. What do you think she'd do if she had a lion? The you think she would? Yeah. She she would actually take a lion and chase those donkeys? And she says, well, maybe maybe I could even have some gingerbread cookies. So she opens a little stand. Look at she goes pound 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 pound, boom 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 boom, and she makes a lemonade stand and she's got some cookies and she's going to sell them. And so she went to the pet store and she says. Do you have a very large lion for sale? Annabella asked Mr. Rumpel, who owned the pet store. Dear me, he said Mr. Rumpel, I sold my last lion to the great Melview Wingaw Circus, but why don't you try the zoo? Look at all these animals he's got. Look at an invisible cat, a fish, a crabby. Look what that sign says. That sign says, buy me, I want to go home with you. What's this? A monster. It looks like a lizard of some kind, huh? Look at there. Here's a fire-breathing dragon. <laughs> here's an ant eater. Here's a frog. What's this? A uh, donkey. Annabella's cats are scared of all these wild things. Anyway, so Annabella says, "Oh!" He goes to the zoo, and Annabella goes to see Mr. Dasher, the zookeeper, and he said, "A uh, lion, dear." He says, I sold my lion, last lion to the circus, too. They needed another lion for the Noah's Ark parade. And so, look, here's the parade. And look at the clowns going down the street, and the clown is, is tossing the balls in the air. 
Here's a lion running along, and here's mousies, little kangaroo mice, and monkeys. And way up here in the uh, in the air is the big dirigible with the MM on it, which means Melvin Migwa's Circus. And look at here he is. Here's the guy leading them. And so this guy, this funny looking guy, I take it this is Melville, or Melvin, or whatever he's, I suppose he's saying. Melvin Wigwa. He's got elephants and lions and duck-billed platypuses and monsters and turtles and big storks and weird things and hopping frogs and penguins. And he says, the zoo man, though, says to Annabelle, he says, well, there's lots of lions in Africa. He says, do you think your mother would let me go? Do you think mama would let me go? Said Annabella, and he says, now, what I do have is rabbits. Would you like some rabbits? But Annabella said, no, nah, rabbits won't be any help at all, because what does she want? She wants a lion to scare those dogs, doesn't she? So Annabella started home, and then she stopped in front of a window filled with strange things. And she jiggled all the money in her purse. And so she went into the store, and she bought something with her money. What do you suppose Annabella bought in that? Mm -hmm. What's in that box? I don't know. I don't know either. So the next morning, as soon as Annabella and the cats come out, here's mean Murgatroyd. He's going, and all the other dogs in town heard him, and they say, come on, it's time to go catch those cats. And they all go roaring, and they, uh-oh. Look at all the dogs. They go skidding to a stop. Oh, no, 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 no. Because right in the middle of the cats is a huge lion. Only is it a real lion, Hunter? Hunty Shane, do you think it's a real lion? No, I think it's really Annabella inside. It's a costume! Annabella took off the head. Look at that. It's a costume. That's what she bought at the store. And all the cats are so happy. And those bad old dogs didn't ever bother her again. Good story, huh? Another one, Shy Shy? Yes. You know what? Your little brother doesn't, your big brother doesn't feel very good, sweetie. He's yeah. over here and he's feeling so bad. He's even rolling That's over. Right. All right, we'll read it in a minute. If Hunter wants to, Daddy will still read a book. Did you want Daddy to read a book, sweetie? You poor little boy. Hunter just really feels sick. You know that, Shy Shy? Yeah. His fever is 103.6, and we're bringing it back down now. That was higher than it's been yesterday. Oh, poor kid. Yes. Are you drinking water, Hunter? Do you want Dad to get you some more water? Want me to get some? Okay, I'm going to turn off the tape here for a minute, and then we'll go get you some water. Oh, no, I don't think it was too much sugar in the cookies, honey. Some kind of a germ got you. Some kind of a germ got my boy, and I don't like it. Made him feel bad. Well, all right, this is a pretty good-looking book, isn't it? This one's called The Chicken Book. Another one. Wait a minute. Oh, you wanted to choose, read the other one first? Yes. Mine, but your particular Mickey. You crunched it. All right, are we happy now? We're going to read Do Not Open. It says, <clears throat> Miss Moody lived in a, lived at Land's End with Captain Kidd. Now, Captain Kidd wasn't the famous pirate. He was a cat. And one morning after a storm, Miss Moody found him washed up on the beach. He was nearly drowned. And she nursed him back until he was well. She got him well, and then... He repaid his kindness by keeping her cottage free of mice. All the bad mice that would come into the cottage, he would get them. And his name was Captain Kidd. And this is Miss Moody. And there's Miss Moody. And she's obviously, she lives in this funky little cottage by, by the beach. And she hangs bottles in her window. And <clears throat> it says, now Captain Kidd <coughs> hated storms. You know what? It's been kind of stormy today, hasn't it? 
It's been raining and the wind has been blowing all day here in Malibu. Well, the kitty didn't like storms, just like our cats don't like rain, do they? They don't like to go outside if it's raining. Sure. She doesn't like to go outside. Dario, he doesn't like to go outside if it's raining, does he? Mm -hmm. Nope. So Captain Kidd, the cat, hated storms. <coughs> but Miss Moody loved them. Just about everything in her cottage was found on the beach after a storm. Even the handsome banjo clock, look at that, over the fireplace was found on the beach. The only thing wrong with it was it wouldn't go. The hands always pointed to 20 minutes to 4 o'clock. So look what she found out there now. Look what she found out on the beach. She found a ship's wheel, didn't she? But now... This is late one afternoon, September afternoon. The sky got very dark. And Miss Moody knew what was coming. So she shut the windows and she lit a nice cheery fire in the fireplace. And then she made a delicious soup for supper, a chowder. But there was enough for Captain Kidd. But he wouldn't come in from under the bed to eat. He wouldn't come out from under the bed because the storm was scaring him, scaring him a lot. See, outside, look at this. There's a lightning and the thunder. And look at the waves of the ocean are just going... Lightning flashed, thunder crashed, rain dashed across the windows. All evening the wind howled furiously and tried to blow the little cottage to Halifax. And so though, Miss Moody, was she worried? Nope, not a bit. Her sturdy house was built by, the sea, by a sea captain. And it could ride out any storm, and so she washed the supper dishes, and she went to bed with a good ghost story. See, she's reading a book of ghost stories. Would you read ghost stories? No? Would they scare you? No? Would they scare you, Shay? Yeah. Ghost stories? Yeah. No. And so, anyway, she went to bed with a good ghost story. Now and then she smiled, and she wondered what surprises might be waiting for her in the beach in the morning. But no. look at this. I'm going to put it down. The no, what? I'm going to put it down. Really? Yeah. I'm oh. going to put it down. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> look at this. The kitty's under the bed, isn't he? Yes. Captain Kid's under the bed. And he crept out of his hiding place and snuggled under a quilt. Miss Moody tickled him under the chin and turned out the light, and she said, you silly old cat. What on earth is there to be afraid of? But after a quick breakfast the next morning, Miss Moody got out of her wheel, got out of her wheelbarrow. See, this is what she takes down to the beach. And she and Captain Kidd were ready for treasure hunting. And the first thing she found was a pretty tin box full of wet cookies, just what she needed for a postcard collection. So she threw out the cookies, which were all yucky. But she had this neat tin box. And so she put it in her wheelbarrow. And then she saw something red in the sand, and it was a rug. And she shook it out, and just one corner was missing, but it would be so pretty in the bedroom, and so the torn end could be tucked under the chest of drawers. And so she strolled, put the drug, look at this, she's put the rug in her wheelbarrow. And the next thing she came upon was a pile of driftwood. What glorious colors it would make burning in the fireplace. There was too much for one load, and so she stowed, look at this, she filled up the, the uh, wheelbarrow with one load, put it, put it in the wheelbarrow, then headed home. And she would come back for the rest later. <coughs> oh, what's that? What's that? I don't know. I don't know what that is. It said Captain Kidd saw it first, and he didn't like it at all. Nearly covered in the sand was a small, dark bottle. Now, colored bottles of all kinds hung in Miss Moody's west window. When the sun shone through, it was like being in church, but there were no deep purple bottles like this, but there were some words on it. It says, do not open this bottle. Why? I don't know. A voice said, what do you want more than anything in the world? More than anything in the world, Miss Moody wanted her banjo clock to run properly, to tick and bong like banjo clocks are supposed to do. But she was certainly not about to tell anyone or to tell a stranger. None of your beeswax, she snapped, and turned around to see who was speaking to her. 
but there was no one there. Maybe the bottle was talking to her. Oh, oh no. Look at her. She's looking at that bottle pretty strange, isn't she? Well, no one was any place in sight. She couldn't even see Captain Kidd for a moment. Then she noticed his tail. Look at it. Look, where's Captain Kidd? He's under the wheelbarrow, isn't he? Huh? Yes, he is. He's under. And so she said, I'll give you whatever you want if you'll just let me out. Oh, a voice is coming from inside the bottle. I'll give you whatever you want if you'll just let me out. Please open the bottle and I'll come out. The voice was coming from inside the bottle. She almost dropped it. She said, Who are you? I'm a poor little child. I was put in here by a wicked magician. I want to go home to my mama. Pull the stopper. Let me out, please. Should she open this up? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Miss Moody could not stand hearing a child cry. She tugged at the stopper. Suddenly it popped open and... <laughs> Inside the bottle, the bottle burst open. A cloud came out and horrid laughter. It was not the laughter of a child. <laughs> I'm free, he said. <laughs> it was a voice that roared like thunder. <laughs> Whoops, we have to wait for the monster for a minute because Mother just came in the room and Mama has painted another beautiful angel t-shirt. Yeah, I thought I'd just stay with the same theme for a couple of t-shirts. It's beautiful, Mama. Is it pretty? It's pretty. Who's this one for? I don't know. I'm just going to do like a bunch and then pass them out. I think it's beautiful, Mom. Because mm -hmm, i got to give one to, uh... Yeah, I should... Yeah, I don't know if Jesse would wear one that I'd make one, but I think... Well, you got a lot of stuff already for Jess. So. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Look at this monster was in the bottle, Mom. This is awful, scary story. We have opened the bottle that they found on the beach, and inside, look at this. The smoke cleared away, and Miss Moody was staring at the biggest, ugliest creature she'd ever seen. He was ugly. Really oh, ugly. Like I, I sit and look, try to look a little bit. Oh, these are good books, Mom. Oh, good. And the monster said, <laughs> I said, thank you, madam. Too bad you didn't make a wish. You could have had anything you wanted. Gold, jewels, a palace. I could have made you a queen or a president. Now I must get to work. Work, said Miss Moody. She's very surprised. Lots of work. When anyone wants to steal or cheat or lie or hurt someone else or start a nice little war, I help them do it. <laughs> Just for fun, I get into people's dreams and I make children wake up screaming. Ooh, is he... Oh, oh look at him. He's getting worse and worse looking, isn't he? Well, that's just what you are, said Miss Moody. A very bad, bad dream. And he goes, look at this. Look at those teeth and those awful ears and those red eyes. And he says, why aren't you afraid of me? Because I'm not afraid of anything I don't believe in. And I don't believe in you for a minute. And the creature began to grow bigger and uglier. He says, now are you afraid of me? <laughs> yes, <they are. laughs> Oh, no, said Miss Moody. No, uh-uh. Not? Okay. Uh, in a little bit. Okay. And look at, he's getting worse and worse looking. Oh, is he ugly now? Is he ugly? Oh, I don't think he's very pretty. Says a creature grew even bigger and even uglier. Are you still not afraid of me? Yeah! 
<laughs> my face. And so Miss Moody says, getting bigger and uglier doesn't scare me. I'm not afraid of, I'm only afraid of mice. You can't grow small like a little mouse. And the creature vanished at Miss Moody's feet until it was a tiny gray mouse. It went, it decided it wanted to scare her so bad it would become a mouse. And just then, Captain Kidd jumped on it so quickly, it didn't even have time to squeak, and he swallowed it and ate it up. Captain, cried Miss Moody, are you all right? And the Captain Kidd, the, the cat, went burp. <laughs> so, Miss Moody, Captain Kidd, and the wheelbarrow all went home, wobbling a little bit. Oh, because when they got to the, before they got to the cottage, Miss, Mo Miss Moody heard it. Bang, 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 bang. And she rushed inside, and the handsome banjo clock over the fireplace was ticking away busily, and the hands pointed to one minute past eight o'clock. So she got her wish after all, didn't she? Ooh, that was a good story. I don't know if I like that monster, though, boy. He scared me. Did he scare you? Hunter, did he scare you? Where's the other one? Where's the one about the, where's the book about the chickens? There's a chicken book, okay. This is a chicken book. Boy, people have been checking this book out a lot since 1981, huh? Almost 1991. Well, let's see here. What is it? I'm not going to scare you anymore. Did I scare you? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Red Howl said the first said the first little chicken but a queer little squirm. What did the first little were we missing a page here? A chicken book. No. I wish I could find a big fat worm. Here he goes. What's that? A worm. A worm is right there. Said the next little chicken with an odd little shrug. Look at this. He's out in the barnyard. There's a horsey and a barn and a chicken and trees. Nice farm. I wish I could find a big fat slug. I would eat him. Thanks. Said the third little chicken with a sharp little squeal. Look at that. Look at this pretty farmland, huh? I wish I could find a nice yellow meal. Mm. Said the fourth little chicken with a sigh of relief. I wish I could find a little green leaf. Oh, these weird little chickens. Said the fifth little chicken with a faint little moan. I wish I could find a wee gap rattle stone. That's Hunter. I don't know where this is. Now see here, said the mother from the fourth garden, from the green garden patch. If you want any breakfast, just come here, come here, look at here, I'll call all the chickens. And here's Mama Chicken saying, scratch! And he's scratching the dirt. And look what they do. This one's getting the worm, this one's eating the slug, this one's eating the gravel, this one's scratching, this one's eating a, a, a leaf. Well, that's a wonderful story, huh? Yeah. I don't know, that's a pretty stupid story. I think. You have something to say? Um, <laughs> Talk to me. I'm interviewing you. What are you doing? I loving you. You're my boy, and I love you. Mm. And there's my girl, and I love her. What have you got, Cheyenne? Tell me about what you have in your hand. What are those? Gumby and Pookie. Gumby and Pookie? Oh, Pokey? Yes. And what do you do with them? Mm. Do you play with them? Yes. How do you play with them? Does Gumby ride on Pokey? Hunter, are you going to feel really good tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe? Oh, my Maybe. poor boy. Well, I don't want you to catch this stuff, Shy Shy Baby Boo Boo. Okay. We've read several new books. You know what we could do? Because Hunter feels so bad, I bet we could watch some cartoons. Would anybody yes, like to watch cartoons? Yes, yes. I think we should let Hunter choose what cartoons he wants to watch, huh? Um, okay, let's count down to turn off the tape. Let's count down. We'll go 
We'll count to ten and we'll turn off the tape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, Cheyenne. You almost did it. Yay.